To put it in perspective, this is the end of the first quarter, Joe, as you've called out on your show before. We're still talking about the funding this year. This should have been done in September 30th uh, of this year. And so we have 75 percent of the of the federal government's discretionary budget funded so far this year. And the politicians up here think that's good enough. Unfortunately, it isn't nearly good enough. The president right now is looking at this and, and thinking about, you know, the border security, uh, disaster relief, the Land Act, all of the things that are not in this uh, this continuing resolution. But this is unbelievable. This is 186 continue resolution since 1974 when this budget act was put in place. We can do better than this, Joe. Um, I just wonder how this finally plays out. The, the, uh, what do you think is going to eventually happen with, with the president and how he approaches this? Do you think it's going to be funded differently? Do you think that, um, do you think, I, I, I don't think the Democrats, which some of the, some of the same individuals may have been, uh, you know, may have, thought more seriously about doing this years ago, or at least are on record saying things, and they've got a lot of different reasons that, that they, they don't want to fund this at all. I guess they're saying it's, what, uh, concrete, we don't want, it's just impractical, it doesn't work, there's better ways to do it, but it all just seems like, is, it, is that the real reasons, or they're not, just not going to let this guy get what he wants, no matter what? Well, it's more of a political issue on the left than it is a, a national security issue, which is what President Trump is calling out. Look, over the last few weeks, President Trump demonstrated that he's very workable on different ways, not only to fund it, but also on different amounts uh, that he needs to get it done. The bottom line is, is that this is a national security issue. I agree with the president. I voted no on our voice vote last night on this continuing resolution for several reasons. This is the biggest reason. I agree with what they're saying in the House. This is the time we should force the Democrats to negotiate on this. I believe that kicking the can down the road does two things. It puts us under pressure uh, internationally with our partners about how serious we are about defending our own border. But the second thing it does is it delays starting next year's budgeting and appropriation process. And, you know, here's the, uh, the irony here is that by delaying to February 8th, we only have 57 working days, the way the Senate works, until July 31 next year, which is when we really have to get this next year's appropriating done. And I'm just very skeptical of being able to do that. So I believe we got to come back right after Christmas. We're arguing now about coming back latter, the latter part of next week to get this done in the Senate. So Senate, you're the only Fortune 500 former CEO in the, in the Senate. You were Re Reebok Dollar General. You think it's the you think the Fed should keep tightening here? And, and did were you did you have a great deal of confidence instilled in you yesterday when you saw uh, uh, Chairman Powell's remarks? Look, we have a big balance sheet. I understand that he's got to deal with that. So does China, Japan, and Europe. But here's the problem. With, this, with $21 trillion of jet, Joe, you call this out all the time. This now we have added in the last three years $450 billion of new interest. And this is even exacerbated because of the fact that President Obama, under President Obama, <clears throat> our bond portfolio, the duration was taken down to under three years. So this is now having a very immediate impact, $450 billion of new interest alone. That's, uh, you know, and by 2023, the GAO and the CBO uh, believe that we will be spending more on interest at the current interest rate than we are on our own military. So this is, this is very concerning to me. It upset the markets, obviously. And we've got to get serious about giving a long-term solution to the bond markets and to our economy. Well, are you commenting on, uh, on fiscal issues or monetary issues there, uh, Senator? Well, you got both, right? I mean, we've dealt with the, the, uh, the fiscal issues here in Washington to some degree. Regulation, energy, taxes, we pull back on the most onerous part of Dodd-Frank. And this fiscal, you know, they're, they're now anticipating a run-up in the economy. The problem is unemployment is, are, 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 is very, very low. We've got a 50-year low in unemployment. We've got the lowest African-American unemployment in U.S. history. And so I believe that that's driving the Fed more than anything else. And I'm worried about the, the ancillary parts of the economy that are just now getting going, and they need access to cheap capital. Do you think we can have a, uh, a, a trade skirmish, a trade war with China at the same time the Fed is, is raising rates? Is that, is that the time to do it? Was that a miscalculation? Is, is now the time to do it or not? Or, or do we need the Fed on board? Should they look at what we're doing with China when they're talking about raising rates? Probably not, right? I, I don't think they do. I think they're primarily focused on the un unemployment rate and the, uh, and the momentum of the economy. But here's the problem. We've got momentum in the trade conversation. Look at what this president has done. We've got NATO now to agree to increase the payments for their own national security. That's a big deal. No president since World War II has been able to achieve that, Joe. 
We also have momentum. We have Canada and Mexico in a new trade agreement. South Korea is in a new free trade, free trade agreement. Japan has been here for the last few weeks talking about it. And now we have an off-ramp with China, which is what some of us have been asking for for months. This gives China and the U.S. an opportunity to save face and actually move to a long-term solution of this terrible problem we have with China. What about that? Uh, you sure we have a trade deal with Mexico and Canada? Well, <laughs> is, is that going to happen? <laughs> In my opinion, it is. I think it is. So the bottom line is we've got momentum, and I'm very worried that uh, we're going to put the, the uh, quietus on this momentum in the economy. Look, we're growing at twice the rate right now as we were under Obama, and I believe this can continue. We've got to deal with our uh, labor issue, and we've got to deal with uh, the international trade issue to increase our exports. That's what this president knows instinctively. Are you looking forward to the next two years, Senator? Are you thinking maybe, uh, I don't know, you, you got, uh, I'm sure you got some nice courses down there in Georgia. I've, I've heard of a couple of them. Are you sure you shouldn't be down there uh, enjoying yourself? Joe, maybe we ought to talk about that off camera, but here's, here's the bottom line. <laughs> no, I just mean, is it, it's going to be, what are the next two years going to be like for, for the House, well, uh, the Senate, not, not the same, uh, obviously, but the whole, the whole atmosphere seems just poisonous. Well, the point is, people sent us up here to get things done. The reason I ran is because of the dysfunction in Washington. The, the global security crisis we're getting worse, and this financial crisis is very real. $21 trillion of debt, we've got to deal with that. Right now, this president has got the economy moving. We're dealing with the budget process, and we've, we're attacking wasted spending up here. We have the first DOD uh, audit coming to us in U.S. history. So I, I think we're moving in the right direction. The problem is if the House under Democratic leadership decide that they're going to just investigate only and not legislate, that's going to be a major problem for America. And I hope they don't do that. Senator, let me ask you a question as an investor. Let's assume we get through the current uh, budget issue and we, we've got a functioning government uh, in January. Handicap for me a focus on one of two big mandates, and including working with your colleagues across the aisle. Are we going to do health care or are we going to do infrastructure? Which one's coming first? Because that matters to me is where I, in terms of where I deploy capital. Well, there are several things. I think health care is going to get immediate attention because it's a crisis out there caused by the Affordable Care Act. The second thing is infrastructure. And the third thing is immigration. Right now, there are two limiters on this economy, in my opinion. If you want to continue to grow at 3.5% to 4%, you've got to fix our labor problem. That's what, that means we've got to deal with our immigration, our legal immigration problem. And you've got to open up other markets abroad, and that's what this president's trying to do. But health care, I believe, if, if we have anything to say about it, health care is going to be the number one topic when we come back in January.